never fought us. Not us united. Oh! <laughs> my favorite moment in this entire maybe I should complicate this before I start speaking here. Welcome to Under Two Capes. I'm Jared. Hopefully my co-host will show up eventually, but this week we're talking about a topic that came to me actually last night when I was tweeting, and I sent out a tweet that actually got some pretty good attention that basically said there is no definitive version of Batman. There is only the version of Batman that one prefers. And it got me thinking, why don't we just make an episode about this? Because in the current discourse with DC movies, Snyderverse and all that in general, we hear this a lot. Not my Batman. This is not how Batman would act. This is not Batman doesn't use guns. Superman wouldn't kill his odd. So I wanted to, so I think that, th that that's a worthy topic for an M2 Caves episode. So let's get into it. My thing. Okay, so I think it's no secret that I'm a big fan of Zack Snyder's DC DC movies. Big fan. I also like the other versions, like the DCAU, DCAMU, um, Keaton. I, I like all these different DC iterations. Now, here's the thing, though. None of these, literally none, not even the comics, there is no one definitive version of Batman. Do you know why? Because if there were, DC would not do all these different Elseworlds stories of Batman or like any other character. I'm just using Batman as an example. Now what I mean, so here's the thing. People will be like, this is not how Batman would act. How do you know that? How do you know that? It's only based on the material that you have consumed. I've, I've read different comics where Batman uses guns, kills people, um, and acts exactly like uh, a bat fleck in the Snyderverse. Okay, the, and here's the thing. My version of Batman in no way invalidates your version of Batman. In no way. Literally no way. What I mean by that is that, guess what? If I, if I say I think Ben Affleck is the best Batman ever, and you say, okay, I think Keaton's the best Batman ever. Okay, Keaton has still been Batman. Affleck has still been Batman. I cannot take that away from you, nor would I want to. My point is, okay, so you like a version of a character. I like a different... Let me go say, here's a better example. Christopher Reeves versus Henry Cavill. I love the Man of Steel, Zack Snyder, Superman. But I have people that come in the chat all the time, and like Nick, saying that they prefer the, the Christopher Reeves, Superman. Now, he, here's the thing. More power to you. You can like whichever version of the character you want, where I take issue is with the gatekeeping of people saying no if you like this version of a character then you're not a real dc fan that's where it gets to the bordering on toxicity now let me be clear here both sides of the snyderverse debate are guilty of this both sides my only thing is that the only time you're not a real dc fan is if you're telling people you're not a dc fan if you like this particular version of the character because guess what? There have been many reboots, many different reboots, many different universes uh, of these characters. There's been like, ever since Superman was created in 1938, there's been many different versions of these characters. Many. So who's to say if these characters will act like this? Here's the thing. You may not like how like Superman acted in Man of Steel, but it doesn't make him any less Superman. Because guess what? He's that version of Superman. You have to treat each like new version, each new medium. Every time they do a new Superman like movie, in, in other words, every time they do like a new run of the character, when a new writer takes over a a, a character, the previous writer's version of the character is done. Is done. It's not going to happen again. It's like Scott Snyder's Batman ended, and now we have Tom King's version of Batman. And if you read the two, they're wholly different. And it's the same thing applies here. Everyone expects like the the characters in the movies to 100% reflect their favorite version of the character, and you shouldn't. It should be like, how does Batman act in the context of the story he's in now? Not the way he works in the comics. How does he work in the context of the story? Same thing goes for like Michael Keaton or or, or Christopher Reeve Superman. Same thing happens. How does he act in con? Now, here's here's the thing. 
You could perf you're more than welcome to prefer. Okay, I like Christopher Reeves more for these reasons. I like Michael Keaton more for these reasons. Or me. I like Henry Cavill more because he's more realistic, more reflective of the Superman that I was reading when I was coming up, which is like new 52. He's not 100% new 52. That's so why I know that. New 52 was was dating Wonder Woman and had a different suit, was a little more aggressive than Henry Cavill. Okay. And that's the other thing. It's a different version. It's sort of combining the new 52 Superman with the Rebirth. But, but, but my point is, is that, is that, in other words, I prefer my character, but it doesn't invalid. It doesn't make your version of the character any less Superman. It literally doesn't. You can like Christopher Reeves and think he's the best Superman ever, and that's fine. Where I take issue with is when people then say that every version of Superman in the movies has to reflect the Christopher Reeves Superman. And that's, first off, unrealistic. And second off, that's creatively stifling because he, he, here's the issue. Yes, Christopher Reeves was a great Superman and he reflected Superman for the way Superman was at the time. In the way I see it, at least, the movie should reflect the comics as they reflect, uh, as they are the time that the comics are coming out. What I mean is that if you're in like the new 52, the movie should reflect the new 52. Because here's the here's the thing that's going to happen. And uh, if we're operating under the arguably false assumption that whenever someone sees like a Superman movie, they decide, okay, I'm going to go uh, pick up Superman comics. They go to their LCS. They go to the new comics. At the time, I'm talking 2013. They go through the rack and see Superman. It should reflect the super. It should pretty much reflect the Superman they saw in the movies. Which, if you're talking about Man of Steel, heavily new Fifty Two. Granted, there were some differences, but you get my drift. It, the character should act like the new Fifty Two Superman. And we got Taladia plays. What's up, brother? What's up? Give me a minute, guys. Give me a minute. I'm just uh, there. We go. Yeah, it's all right. So, so uh, for, to, to give you an idea of what we're talking about, by the way, we're not live. This is pre-recorded, but I'm talking yeah. about how there's no one version of a character. There's no de definitive version of Batman and Superman. There is only really the version that one prefers. It's like you and I pr pr prefer Henry Cavill, but that doesn't mean we hate Christopher Reeves at all, right? Yeah. So Christopher Reeve, the, Christopher Reeve was the era of. Superman from, let's say, the 70s, mm -hmm. right? 70s, 80s. We're talking Silver Age, Superman, you know, that era. There's no there's no definitive answer for that, right? Yeah. Like, there's, there's a definitive Superman. Pre-crisis, uh, ultimately. Pre-crisis, pre yeah. And if you think about it, sorry about this. Uh, and the fact is, is like when it comes down to um, Batman, there's many a Batman's, right? Mm -hmm. But Michael Keaton's version of Batman, right? We can call that the definitive pre-crisis Batman. Mm -hmm. The new Fifty Two Batman, we can call that the Nolan era, if you wanted to. Yeah, kind of. When you think about it, right? You could either mm -hmm. call it the new Fifty Two, or we can call that um, the just before Crisis on Infinite Earth, the year or oh no, the Dark Knight, uh, the dark year one, the year mm -hmm. one Frank Miller universe. I, right. I, I would say Batman Begins at least is year one. Yeah, so we take inspiration from that. So that's Frank Miller's year one. So that's that universe, and then Dark Knight and all of that can take in the new Fifty Two. And that actually it. gets to an interesting point that I was uh, talking about before you came in is that. The, my problem with a lot of, particularly Superman fans, is that they expect every movie Superman to be Christopher Reeves. And what they don't realize is that these movies have to reflect the comics as they exist at the time that the, that the movie's coming out. Because ultimately, let's say um, we're operating under the arguably false assumption that after I go see a, a superhero movie, I want to go read the comics. Okay, so I go to my uh, LCS. I go to the new rack. At the time, the new 52. And then shouldn't the version in the comics in so some way in terms of character reflect the movie? Yeah. Like, and, mm -hmm, go ahead. 
I was going to say that the, the thing is that people don't realize is right. The the era, the 70s, 80s reflect for pre-crisis because it was a big event back in the 80s and 70s and 80s, right? Mm-hmm. It was such a big deal back then. Nowadays, you got to remember, these days you got to look for more recent events. Final yeah. Crisis is a big event, right? And that took more modernized. Um, death Metal. Death Metal, another prime example. And Deceased, that's another really big one, mm-hmm. right? DC's is DC's, DC's an elsewhere story, but can still work mm-hmm. in the terms of, let's say if they want to do an elsewhere story with a different Batman, they can do that. Yeah. They can do that with Pattinson's, because as far as I'm concerned, Pattinson can f***ing be a dead Batman, uh, and uh, that would be f***ing awesome to have a dead mm-hmm. Batman. I mean, he is already dead as, if, as we live and breathe. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to end up being dead because of... Yeah. Uh, of what's going on with Warner Bros. Discovery. But my point is, but ultimately, here, here's the thing, is that it's unrealistic to expect these characters to remain the same way, uh, to remain as one version through, throughout. Let me put it this way. You can love Christopher Reeve's Superman, which I like it for what it is. It's totally fine. Me liking Henry Cavill in no way invalidates Christopher Reeve's as Superman or Michael Keaton as Batman. All it means is that I prefer a different version where it gets bordering on toxic is when people say you don't read the comics or you're not a real fan if you like Snyder's version. There, but here's the thing with the Snyder universe, at least he takes inspiration from different materials. Yeah. And it shows that. It shows that in the uh, BVS, Frank Miller's uh, Dark Knight. Yeah. For sure. Justice League takes inspiration from. I would say... Um, Justice League Origin, I would say. Mostly. Justice League War, I would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's essentially that, yeah. And maybe yeah, a Justice... little bit of Dark Side War. The, the whole arc yeah. is pretty much Dark Side War. Yeah, so Justice League War, Dark Side War, yeah. Take inspiration from that. And also, potentially, you could also you could add a little bit more... Uh, what else could be interested? Crime oh. Syndicate. The crime syndicate, yes, yeah, and and they use the Watchmen we were, characters to be the evil version of the Justice League. Uh, so, guys, we were talking about. I want to bring this up. We were talking about this uh, last night, me and um, Jared, and a potential future Justice League film if we wanted to. It was you a know, game. I film. thought I thought it was a game. It was a game, but yeah, we were talking about this, and we think you know, crime syndicate would be pretty cool as a villain. In the in the DC universe, not DC EU anymore. Just calling it DCU. That but, would actually work really well. You know, a crisis, a crisis on two Earths live action. Yeah, because they they could have the different actor. In that case, that they would be totally fine using different, different actors. actors. Well, like, yeah, we don't have to use. We don't have to have Henry Cavill play Superman and Ultraman. In other words, exactly. And it, it works out in that favor because they take inspiration from that comic and also take inspiration from the animated movie. And furthermore, they could dip into Toads and say, look, we can do a big event. That That is a big event, Crisis on Two Earths. Yeah, and ultimately that gets into this, is, is that, yeah, the thing I like about Snyder's DC movies is that he he doesn't just focus on one thing of comics for inspiration. He takes from... So many different pre-crisis, post-crisis, new fifty-two rebirth. In terms, in terms of, he tries to hybrid every era of DC in order to like give fans, uh, to, to give all fans something to to latch on to. Agreed, and he he's done that. Snyder's done that with all the characters. If you think about mm-hmm. it, yeah, he's done that with Superman, where it's new fifty-two now rebirth, and pre and pre uh is it? Yes, pre-crisis, isn't it? The death mm-hmm. of Superman. Yeah, and uh, it's like it's with a, Batman. No no, 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 I mean, is Superman pre-crisis? Is the death of Superman? Yeah, th- I, I, actually, I think the death was post-crisis because the post-crisis right. when everything got really dark. So he's done like taking inspiration from the post-crisis, a uh, new fifty-two, and he's taken from Rebirth as well. So mm-hmm. it, it's it's literally there. You can see. It like standing out and guys like we think uh, we both think that this is going to be major going forward for the dc universe 
going mm-hmm. like with, the, with especially with all the characters like with Batman. I, I think like Batman's, tr- you know, so on. Um, what's it called? His definitive Batman, I should say. The character takes inspiration for everything and. One Batman is all we need. We don't need to have two Batmans. We don't need to. You don't need Batman. Keaton or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, what I think is Keaton won't be in the bat suit a lot. He'll just be around. True. Uh, unless they put him back in his own pocket universe. Or unless they, they they just put him in the future and say Batman Beyond, which is what we all want. I think I think I think Zaslav might end up doing that, guys. And honestly, that's what that's what the fans want. That's what they should have done. <laughs> I was like, what? But my question is for you, What's up? Jared, is who would you cast as Terry McGinnis? That's a good question. Honestly, I could cast the dude who plays Nightwing in Titans. B- Brendan Doyers? No. Either him or like Dylan O'Brien. I say a lot of that because he could play a lot of interesting characters for DC, in- including like m- maybe Barry Allen or Terry McGinnis. I thought of somebody, but... Who? It's gone. It's gone back a it's a long time ago. He mm-hmm. was the perfect fit. Um, I was gonna say that kid, um, who's now about fifteen, sixteen. He was he was Billy Batson. Oh, you mean the kid from uh, that? That the, the, uh, okay. You mean from, from from the Shazam movie? Yeah, I could see yeah. him being Terry. Right. If they 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 don't need to because if you think about it, they're gonna have to recast Billy Batson, isn't it? Eventually, yeah. Yeah. So imagine him taken out of that universe and put into the Batman Beyond universe. That'd be cool. I, I could definitely see that. I mean, that would work in so many wonders and fans would eat it up alive. Oh, yeah. and th- that, Because he, he, he could definitely do Terry. And that gets into another thing. Going on to the DCAU, because there are people that treat the DCAU as the only as the only legitimate version of the DC universe that's existed. And when you look at it, there are plenty of contradictions to how these characters would actually act in in the DCAU. But it doesn't make it any more any less valid. I mean, the way I see it, Taladia, is that yeah. if it has the official DC logo and the Warner Brothers logo on it, it is a valid interpretation of DC. That's it. Yeah, because it's endorsed by DC and the other. You may not like it, and that's hey, that's your right. But if it has that DC and Warner Brothers logo, if it has a DC and Warner Brothers logo on it, it's a it's a DC it's a DC thing. You can't say it's not Batman because guess what? It's Batman. It's Batman. Yeah. Which so, is, and once again, it doesn't invalidate your uh, uh, anyone watching. It doesn't invalidate your preferred Batman or anything like that. All it means. Is that for right now? The, sorry, well, let me put it this way: there is one d- definitive Batman in the DCAU, uh, a- a- in the DCU now, the movie universe, yeah. and that's Ben Affleck right now. So th- 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 that's the only time we can say he is the d- d- definitive Batman. And what we mean by that is that he's the only Batman in the universe. But yeah. he, he, there, there, there is no definitive interpretation of these characters because guess what? The, the, we live in a, a it, it's a universe that is built upon there being multiple versions of these characters with a with a multiverse with now a hundred and, and like four Earths. So there's no definitive version of it ever. And, and they change and reboot so many times. Yeah. And if you think about it, they did that with the Nolan verse. They, they've done that with uh, Clooney. They've done that with Kilmer. They've done they've literally tried multiple Batman's. And the way I see it going forward, it's like there, there's no definitive answer, but the DCU is a Ben Affleck. Nobody mm-hmm. else, Michael Keaton, will have his own pocket universe. In the future, I can see Zaslav saying, look, you know, that's that's what we want to do. And, you know, James Gunn will probably say, yeah, that's, that's a really good choice. Um, because they can't really have two more uh, Bruce Waynes. That's yeah, the really. They ultimately, can't... I just thought of what they could just do is just p- put him in his own pocket y- y- universe at the end of Flash and just leave him and never revisit him because I don't think Zaslav wants to have multiple versions of Batman, even if they're in different universes. Yeah, exactly, and that's why I think we're getting. That's why Ben Affleck's in the Aquaman two mm-hmm. cameo is a big is a big deal, and he 
it just shows that that is the definitive DCU's um, Batman. And it's not like, oh, we're going to get Michael Key in here or we're going to get Michael Key in there. Those ideas are gone now. That's been scrapped. That was the old regime that thought stupidly that Michael Keaton could be the definitive DCEU Batman going forward. I'm like, no. No, no. It's like, no, no, no. But but I want to ask you this, right? Yeah, what's up? It's a, it's a really clear point. Do you think they might add in Nightwing or Robin or oh, yeah. Red Hood? I think later on in the bat in the and by and I talk about the, the, the Batman movies. I'm talking about the Affleck movies. I think yeah. they'll use the Affleck movies to like introduce them. What they might do is is use the Flash to retcon that these characters already exist. That like Nightwing exists. That like Red Hood. Uh, the only one I think that they'll do as a movie is Under the Red Hood. But in other words, I think that at the end of Flash. Nightwing, uh, the, the whole Nightwing thing of him being Robin, then leaving, and then becoming Nightwing will already have happened. In other words, we'll start with him being Nightwing. Mm. So I, I think what they'll do is they'll retcon it so these characters already exist, including Batgirl. We know Batgirl already exists because she was going to be in the original Affleck script, so she already exists. And um, uh, the uh, again, the only one I think they'll do is Under the Red Hood because there's no reason not to do that storyline because if you retcon it so Jason Todd's the dead Robin, why not do Red Hood? I'm just trying to think. And can you imagine a, uh, an Aff a Ben Affleck under the Red Hood movie? I could think of Batman Joe Maginello. Yeah. Sure. De oh, I could, I could definitely th think of that. Which I'm sh I think we're going to get that at least after Flash. I, I I wouldn't be surprised if they announced that. And you know what would be really cool if that you know the Arkham Origin trailer. Yeah, if that's the fight, yeah, yeah. If that's if that's the actual fight that we're gonna get in the Batman, because that was fantastic. I still get goosebumps every time I watch that thing. It just looks so badass. But you know, luckily for us, WB Montreal were on it like a shot, and they literally did. They thought outside the box, and they even in within that game. By the way, guys, that was there was no definitive answer for the Arkham games either. So we, mm -hmm. we can we can add that to the front as well because. Everyone was just saying, oh, Kevin Conroy is the definitive Batman for for thing. And that was, you should be in every Arkham game. He and wasn't. He, he wasn't. He wasn't he the was, voice um, of Batman in, in, in Origins. You can clearly tell that's not Conroy. That wasn't Conroy. That was uh, Roger Craig Smith who voiced Sonic. Which makes sense because that was a younger Batman. Yeah. And fun fact for you guys. WB did ask Rocksteady to make Arkham Origins, and they declined it. Mm -hmm. the, the, I wondered why that game does not feel like really like an Arkham game. Yeah, because the Rocksteady declined it, but it's still a decent story. It told it told the tale, and Deathstroke versus Batman was the main key plot point. It was the main key big. Uh, Badass, you know, bad. and is the hardest boss fight in the entire Arkham series. I'm just gonna tell you yeah. that right there. I was like, yeah, oh I'm, my gosh, I this was is trying brutal. To, I was trying to keep it PG for you, and I was trying to think of a word. It's the most difficult would, uh, boss fight in that entire series, ultimately, uh, in my opinion. You know how many times it took me to beat it? <laughs> it took More me like ten. It took me ten. More than three times to be try and beat that boss because I, I had to keep on dodging and blocking, but. Yeah. That's besides the point, but I still I still stand by this. There's no definitive Batman in any in any, in any media. media in any. And, media and here's the thing. Games. And, and here's the thing. Also, in, in Tevia, this goes to you. It's it's like going to to the comic side. There is no definitive version because here's what you have to do. And comic story and um uh, uh, brought this up on a recent podcast. He said you have to treat each writer's time on a character as a different version of that character because ultimately that's what it is so it's like say they do dh john kent it's not going to be the version that you want because what they'll probably do is start introducing the son of kal-el stuff but so in, in other words unless tomasi comes back it's not going to be the super sons part it, it, like this way what i could see D dc doing is putting tom taylor on it because they're that stupid and then guess what he'll start laying the seeds they could make it so jay Man uh, nakamura and john kent were childhood friends 
So, in other words, unless Tomasi gets on this, it's not going to be the version of the character you want. Unless, like, Scott Snyder becomes a uh, writing Batman, it's not going to be, like, the version of Batman that most people enjoy. Yeah, sorry, Tevia, but I have to, I have to agree with Jab- J- Jared here. It's not going to be the John Kent, the Super Sons that you want, and it's going to be the completely different. They're going to have to revamp the character entirely and mm-hmm. re- do a different telling of his origin story. Think about it like um, the New 52's origin of Superman. Yeah. And how he <laughs> became. That that origin was completely different to pre-crisis. They changed it so his pa- so his Earth parents get killed. Yeah. Literally. And it's the same thing with uh, Batman's origin as well. Like it was completely different in New 52. So it's like, okay, well, they're going to have to do the same thing with John Jonathan Kent, where his origin story will have to be retold in a different ma- manner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's like, e- e- even speaking of d- d- different versions, the movie John Kent is not even like the comic John Kent. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, the animated movie John Kent isn't the John Kent that we know. He's yeah. great. I-, I love the animated movie, but it's not the comic John Kent. Yes. So that being said, though, <laughs> like mm-hmm. there is no definitive answer for any of the characters, including Batman. So we're gonna say it like that. Yeah, and, and to to conclude this topic before we move on to to the other topic I'm talking about in this episode, ultimately here here's the thing: you're more than welcome to have your preference on which version of the character you like. Hey, Nick prefers Christopher Reeve Superman and uh, and M- Michael Keaton Batman, and you know what? More power to him. But you can't say that those are the only versions of the characters that that are legitimate, because if those are the only versions of the characters that are legitimate, all the other mediums would reflect them. Guess what? They don't. They're all these di- different versions of the characters, and I think do, I, I, I know that the Snyder fandom is constantly accused of being toxic. Really what the toxic side of fandom is, is gatekeeping and telling people you're not a real comic fan, you're not a real DC fan if you like these other versions of the characters. No, sorry. That doesn't work like that. The way I see it, you're you're not a DC fan if you're telling someone they're not a DC fan uh, if they like definitive versions. Because guess what? Multiverse and there are other versions. There are people like Thomas Wayne Batman more than Bruce Wayne Batman. They're still Batman fans. There you go. That's all we're going to say on that. So next thing that I that I want to talk about. I, I, actually, let's talk about the games real quick. So because we're talking because yes. we're playing because we're playing Gotham Knights and the the thing about it that I was thinking about. So I really lo- uh, so one of the things I like about G- Gotham Knights and like really. The, oh yeah, really the entire universe of games r- r- really they've kind of established is that, all right, I see, I like the idea of Batman being d- being killed. That's interesting, and that's a, an interesting way for these characters to grow and see how they relate to each other. Because that's honestly one of the coolest parts of the game story is that when you're playing it, and then p- part of the, those little interim c- cutscenes in the Belfry is like how these different characters interact without Bruce. But here's the thing, though. I think the reason why the game is struggling is that, yes, the story works. It's just that you can't get enough normies on there because ultimately these characters can't hold their own game. They're not mainstream enough now to be able to hold. Because the minute someone sees DC and Gotham, they think, okay, Batman. Where's Batman? Oh, he's dead? Why do I care? Agreed, yeah. You see... Here's the thing, right? The deal with Gotham Knight is like it's separate in the Ark, separate to the Arkhamverse, but at the same time, you get to expand these characters in such a big way that mm-hmm. the Arkham games never did. Yeah, right. Which because you never got. They weren't the main characters. Yeah, and no, no, no. So in the Arkham games, you got to play as Robin, you got to play as Nightwing oh, yeah. in mm-hmm. certain DLCs, right? Mm-hmm. But and back ill too, but you didn't get to see their backstory, or you didn't get to see how they made the transition from Robin to Nightwing, or how they started starting off their journey as knighthood and stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. You never got that in the in Gotham Knights. You got to see how they become a Bat family, so to say, where 
they're united together mm-hmm. and they gel really well. And mm-hmm. uh, that's why the voice acting is so well told. Yes, like it's so good. It's so well told. Like, you know, oh, well, when Batman dies, this is how this is how we have to stick together. Mm-hmm. And this is, what the, this is what Bruce would have wanted. Wanted us to work together. Mm-hmm. And in Ar- in the Arkham games, you wouldn't have got that. I don't think you would have. I don't think you would have no. got, like, because, because, like, you wouldn't have got, like, Red Hood being like, okay, well, uh, or Jason Todd being like, well, he was the Arkham Knight now becoming the Red Hood. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have got him to have, uh, not mystical powers, but you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't be using, um, non lethal rounds. You'd be using lethal rounds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, okay, well, what about like in Gotham Knight? They he uses non lethal rounds, and mm-hmm. this literally takes place just I think the, the moment after he got resurrected. Yeah, kind of the, the uh, in terms of Jason Todd's timeline, I would imagine just after because he's still feeling the l- 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 the lingering effects of the Lazarus yeah. Pit. Yes. So it kind of makes sense there. And that's what I love about Gotham Knights is like for each individual character, you get to see their backstory, you know, the Flying Graysons as an example, or Tim Drake's journey to becoming Robin and Batgirl's return, uh, Barbara Gordon's return to be Batgirl, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's really big. Like the open world, you get there, there is secretive things. That I'll say that much, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah the, the, there are plenty of Easter. What I love, my favorite thing to do is read those emails because those emails are like so many other characters. That's their cameo. Like, okay, I'll, I'm just gonna say it. Spoiler alert. So, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go into spoilers in five, four, three, two. One okay, Superman email. So I'm like that. That's a Superman, Wonder Woman, t- members of the Teen Titans. I'm like, oh, this is really cool. Yes, and and the fact is, Clark Kent makes puns in this universe. Mm-hmm. Literally the makes it. Lois Lane. Lois Lane, yes. And it's unique it's... to each character, too. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is actually really cool. It's like Wonder Woman emails uh, Barbara at the beginning and, and talks about how she's a strong w- woman and all that stuff. But you know, fun fun thing, right? There's more Superman references than there is anything else. True. There is more of that Superman emails and super family, so to say. I shouldn't have said that because that will get Tevia all up. High yeah, high yeah, high. yeah. We're not. But when we talk about Superboy in, from here on out, we're talking about Connor Kent. Yeah. So we're talking about referencing Connor Kent, but like this, the Super Family, like you know, it's Connor Kent, Cara Danvers, uh, Superman, Lois Lane, those types of people were referenced heavily in this in this universe, mm-hmm. and I think this is going to lead up to something big. After Gotham Knights. Mm-hmm. By the way, you know what's interesting is that when I, when I was playing, I noticed okay, so uh, Colonel Kane. Where have I heard that name before? Oh yeah, Batgirl, uh, Batwoman's dad. Like, wait a Bat- second, oh. shouldn't shouldn't Batwoman be showing up at some point? All right, him being the voice of the Court of Owls, I did not see that color. I didn't that's because what I thought. I thought that they were going to pull a Houdini and have uh, the resurrected Bruce Wayne be the voice of the court. Then when he takes off the yeah. helmet, I'm like, I'm like, what? it's either w- w- would have worked, but I'm like, whoa. Nobody saw it coming, including me. I never saw that coming, right? Yeah. When Jacob, when Jacob Kane was revealed, I was just like, what? <laughs> I was like, okay, this is actually really cool. I like that. So it's like, it's like- okay. And someone that knows their identities too. That's that. That's that's the screwy part. He knows who they are. Yeah, and that really is intriguing. I was just mm-hmm. like, very very interesting to know f- that Jacob Keynes knows your identity, and he knows what Bruce. Actually, he even knew Bruce's identity too. Yeah, he even mentions it. And I'm just like, ah, oh my God. WB Montreal made made a brilliant, brilliant, compelling story. That not only expands the Court of Owls in such a way, the original 52 story arc for the Court of Owls, but made it great. 
for, yeah. for each, each and, and, and I will say f f fighting the talons they actually made that a challenge because you can't just punch them you kind of have to stun them with like your character's ranged attacks and then go in and punch them so th they made it a little more variety in combat instead of just punching them a, a couple of times yeah and you have to dodge you have mm -hmm. to time your attacks the ability trees though the abilities are great I'll be honest with you uh, I've only got like six APs I need left, so you're gonna have to do new game plus. And I'm gonna bring this up right now to let people know if you're still missing some of your skill tree, uh, some of your abilities for momentum abilities, I recommend doing the training in new game plus, and you'll get from level thirty to level forty mm -hmm. much faster. Yeah, go ahead and do that. So the uh, and I, I did like, by the way, how each each individual character actually feels unique. In other words, they don't feel like the same character. And Arkham did this too really well because each because Nightwing does not put, f f feel like Batman, or in in this game, Red Hood does not feel like Robin. They actually feel like they're their individual characters. It's like you can use Red Hood as more of a ranged character, or you can just punch people. So. That's why I say it's not as it's not a bad game. It's not it's not as bad as people as as like the critics seem to be labeling it. In no way is it is it a horrible game. I think it's a it, I think it's a great Batman game. My only thing is that it would be it, I, I do think it would be more more like adopted if Batman were not dead in the game. I got news for you. That's the way it works. Batman. If you want a Batman side characters to to become more mainstream, you have to have them with Batman. It's the same reason why I'm sure Batgirl got canceled because we didn't establish her in a Batman movie. Yeah. So there's like it's... no reason not to. Exactly. And it's it's really crazy that um I was just taking a look at a tweet from uh, Sky uh, Skywalker, he just DM'd me. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> But I was going to say that, you know, the thing is with Gotham Knights, though, I, I think what's really, really intriguing is the, how each pre premeditated crimes will take a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. They do. They, took a, they take a lot of your time. And that's what really, it doesn't tick me off, but it, it is that as soon as you get into it's it, tedious. You f it's tedious, yeah. And you don't realize the time. Like it goes mm -hmm. by and you're like, I'm just like, wait a minute. Considering just, the fact that they're not all that complicated. They just show up and punch someone mostly. Yes. Mm -hmm. If they were all unique, then yeah, I could see like having a lot of these different challenges. Although that is kind of recreating, I'm sure, how these characters feel when they're just patrolling. And then they see the same dudes committing the same crimes over and over and over again. Some of them it was you know i'm not gonna mm -hmm. lie some of them mm -hmm. were repeat on repeat but the the factions were different though some of the factions and they, at least that was a thing um but you got to be careful of the cops the cops mm -hmm. are there if you if you stay there the cops can come to that place where you stop a premeditated crime and they can attack you mm -hmm. so my uh, so we've talked about why uh, Gotham Knights is good. Let's talk about some dings against the game. Number one, the lack of vehicles. By lack of vehicles, I mean the lack of variety because you can only really use the bat cycle. Yes, which is cool. Don't get me wrong, I love the bat cycle, but it would have been cool to like maybe drive around a Batmobile because anyone that's read Batman comics knows that whenever you see the Batcave, he's got like every Batmobile that's ever existed in there. So I'm pretty sure he has more than one, maybe even in another Bat bunker. It's yeah. like, come on, guys. But it's it's not only that. Um, they could e easily done um the back copter or mm -hmm. or bat wing along a bat wing well, a bat wing of some sort or well they 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 are made, they are using a bat wing technically for fast. But you travel. can't fly that too. It's like come come on, guys. I want something that I myself can pilot. Yeah. But there is one cool thing about the traversal, though. Mm -hmm. Each each individual traversal is completely unique for the, each individual character. 
My only problem with that is that Batgirls is very generic. Okay, she uses her cape to glide. Where have we seen that before? Every Batman game. Every Batman Arkham game, yeah. Uh, Robin's teleportation mm -hmm. is probably the weakest out of all of them because it's like 10 seconds you've got between trans one place to another. Mm -hmm. At least, I, I, I think my favorite is honestly Nightwings because he just flies. Nightwing is literally the best traversal. Not, not saying that you know Red Hoods. I think Red Hoods is second best. I think because he Hulk he, jumps pretty much. Not Hulk jumps. He fart jumps. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's true. Because I've seen it. I, I don't know if you've seen the if you've seen the clip on YouTube when somebody says every time Red Hood jumps he farts. You hear a farting sound. <laughs> I have to I see that. There is it's on YouTube. You'll just have to find Red Hood mystical leap farting uh, farting sound, and you'll find it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, with Nightwing, he just hangs onto like a jet glider and just go. He's you, like you this. can make him go up and down. It's it's like it's it's actually really really unique. I'm like okay, I like this. Yeah, I fun fun fact: Nightwing did have a glide in the comic. So mm -hmm. there you go. So so there you go. People are like, oh, it looks like Fortnite. I'm just like, nah, you don't even know what you're talking about. You Fortnite did not invent that, dude. Fortnite did not invent that. Fortnite stole that from DC. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, Fortnite is j j just a bunch of stolen stuff slapped together and, and given a fresh coat of paint. That's what it is. Yeah, or rebranded. Rebranded. But what's funny about Fortnite, by the way, is that okay, so. The Marvel and DC crossovers in that universe are canon to both universes. So technically, we've already had a Marvel DC crossover. Yes. So, I mean, there is that, I guess. <laughs> but um, I will say another thing I really love. I love the Batman suit in Gotham Knights. It's the Rebirth Batman suit. Yes, 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 it it's is. Pretty much this. Which I love the yellow trim around the bat signal, the the gray on the on the yellow. It just looks really really cool. But the bat the belt is gray, which is yeah, kind of yeah the belt. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah, the belt is gray, which I, I'm like oh okay. But I, the point is, I I have always loved in Rebirth how how it had the y the yellow outline on the bat. I always felt that that was really really cool. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool and pretty unique. Um. Now the question is, of course, what will what will happen to the WB Montreal second game? Yeah, because the rumor is that that's going to be super either Superman or Justice League. Yes, which, which we, myself myself and Jared were talking about this last night, mm -hmm. and we, we we both think it has to be Superman at this point. It has to be Superman, or I could see it being Justice League because they already have like the mechanics for a for a co op game. Yeah. And it, it is amazing to know that it could be still set in the Gotham Knights universe. Yeah, because that that's like, oh, that's really cool because they could do like, because uh, 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 because let's say it's a Justice League game. My question was, last time I was talking to Saladia, was what do they do about Batman? Because the Justice League has to have a Batman. I thought, what if they have a system like in um, Mass Effect where your choices carry over? What I mean by that is that if whoever, like, let's say you, you, you play the final, like, mission, whoever you played that as and, 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 and like, was in the final cutscene, that person becomes Batman, essentially. And then he takes uh, Bruce's place on the league. Yes. So th that's why they could do it. Or they could explore what's the Justice League look like without Batman. That would actually be really cool. True. And they could do a four player co op too. Yeah. And what they, they should do is have it so, is, so like each m mission is a different lineup of Justice Leaguers, or do it like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, where you can kind of se uh, select who you want to take with you. Or, or they could do it like Suicide Squad or Avengers. Mm hmm. Yeah, kind of like that, only, only well. But that's beside the point. But, no, no, no. In Avengers, like you know, you could it doesn't it can be open world, mm -hmm. but it's set it's set into one world, it's set into one city, which mm -hmm. I think Metropolis should be the focal point of the next game. Well, 
Yeah, that's true. They could do Doom Metropolis. I was about to say because do we know which city uh, Suicide Squad is taking place in? Metropolis. Metropolis. I was about to say Warner Brothers might not want to do that. We might want to have a little bit more variety. No, but with the given fact that Rock, um, Rocksteady is literally saying that, look, you know, this is saying Metropolis and everything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to be. Gotta remember, Gotham Knights is set. It was set after. Um, it's literally under the Gotham, mm-hmm. and it was going to be. They were going to do another Batman Arkham game, and it was still going to have a Gotham City there. Mm-hmm. Think about it like that. So they could still have two Metropolis. True. They, okay, I see that. They they could do that. So. Yeah, I guess as long as I, I would say the um, as long as they don't like use Brainiac as the villain, others if they make it no. distinct enough, so it's not. I don't think it's gonna be Brainiac. I don't think it's gonna be Brainiac. I think it'll have to be someone like Mongol or someone. The Crime like, Syndicate. Or the Crime Syndicate. I'm just or... I'm just saying, how cool would that be if, if the Crime Syndicate is the villain? Uh, are the villains of the Justice League game? What if they brought brought in for this Superman game is some of the villains that were they were gonna use in Factor Vives game. I'm unfamiliar w- 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 with the Factor Five Superman game. You, 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 um, you, you, you want to refresh my memory? Okay, so Factor Five was gonna build a Superman game that has various villains from Brimstone to Livewire, Met- mm-hmm. uh, Metallo, oh, Brainiac, cool. Dark Side, uh, Parademon, Zod. True. That that would be interesting. Let's be honest. In a Justice League game, I mean, it could be the 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 Crime Syndicate or Dark Side, really. Uh, in terms of because if you're doing a Justice League game, the threat has to be large enough to warrant not one superhero dealing with it. I don't. I don't be like Avengers when they do flipping aim bots after aim bots after aim bots. No. That- pl- it's just that that's the most annoying part. And make the objectives varied instead of just stand in this spot for like an hour. Yeah, it has oh to be. And that's why I think. That's why I think WB Montreal's success does successfully well with Gotham Knights over Avengers, where they don't, where they don't simply just say, "Okay, well, we're gonna make the crimes on repeat, where you face the same faction every goddamn time." It's it, 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 it's it's completely different. Sorry for language, and uh, no, it's okay. completely different. That's fine. And uh, it's completely different in that perspective. I only wish that they had the 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 factions act a little more unique than each other, because really they're ultimately like doing the same stuff. I think the freaks are more Harley Quinn's um, faction. Mm-hmm. Regulators are people to do with Mister Freeze, and the mob is got to do with Clayface. I think no. I get that. It's just I, I wish that, that they had more varied attacks, more varied like stuff from a gameplay perspective. Because ultimately, they all handle the same. Yeah, they all handle the same. But there is one unique thing about what? this game: they all are connected to supervillains. Yeah, that's Big true. Things. Instead of just being like random street thugs. They're all connected to big supervillains. And like as an example, regulators being with Mr. Freeze, that was really, really big. Mm-hmm. And that that took me a long time just to try and complete that. I'm not gonna lie about that. I, I'm mm-hmm. I'm almost finished with Mr. Freeze's but um Mr. Freeze's side quest. Mm-hmm. Um but whereas the Harley Quinn one takes a lot of your time, so so will Clayface. Clayface's mission will take a lot of your time just to do those. So you're you're not gonna be bored with this game. This the plus there is end game content coming soon as well, heroic assault. Mm-hmm. Which is which, be pretty big. Which is like of the villain for that for that heroic assault, I did not see that one coming. Yes. A, you know, there is going to be a raid, guys, but we're going to give you a five-second warning. So if you guys don't want to be known for that warning, you go five, four, three, two, one. The villain for the raid is going to be Starro. Which I'm like, in a Batman Batman game, it's like, 
Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, Star of the Conqueror. Interesting. Which, that would honestly be a cool thing for the duration of the uh, because the way uh, the interesting way I could see this happening is that the first m mission is Starro escaping, and then everyone and, and then like most of the people in, around Gotham are taken over by Starros, and that way they kind of change up the, the dynamics for the duration of the of the operation, if you will, of the heroic assault. Yeah, but we do, but we do know heroic assault is thirty floors. Oh, geez. Yeah, dirty floors of beating up enemies. That's gonna be real. That's gonna be really good co-op content. Jeez. Yes, and that's why I need people to play with. So, it's cr we know it's crossplay. So, I mean, we know it's crossplay to some degree, but they haven't implemented it, and that's the problem. I really hope it's implemented before the. Uh, I mean, uh, around the time they bring in heroic assault, then. Yeah, because that's really big. Heroic Assault, you're going to need four people to play with. Mm -hmm. And them doing it to one platform and only that one single platform, I'm just like, oh my god, they need they need they need to have it. They need to have cross play for this game. Who if they don't, it's it, it's really bad. It's like mm -hmm. it, it's it's really really bad in terms of like marketing. But the cool thing is, is at least they're separating it from the story campaign. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, where, where that is two player co op. This is going to be four player. Which I'm like, thank God. So on that note, we're gonna ca uh, call it. This was fun. So the the overall thesis I want to leave you guys with is that there's more than one version of the characters that, that, that that's legitimate. There's no one definitive, and Gotham Knights is pretty good and has potential to to grow more th than what it is. In other words, it has potential to increase in popularity because we've seen that happen many times with games where if they start off in an okay spot and then they become so incredible. So Taladia, always a pleasure. It's the, yes. the, thanks for coming on and sharing your Go Gotham Knights inside information and all that. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's a pleasure being on the show guys. Make sure you do subscribe to comics league. And this has been the UTC podcast. And, uh, well, no, it's it's not UTC podcast, is it? No, it's under two case po of a podcast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the daytime show. As yeah, they call it. Te technically daytime because what we're gonna do is that Comics League uh, Dark, which actually is in a couple of hours, is going to be like our nighttime news show where we explain everything, and then I'll be on Taladia's channel tomorrow uh, talking about everything yeah. DC. Yeah, we're going to be talking about more Gotham Knights. We're going to be talking about the future of DC games. We're going to be talking about the DCU. We'll talk we're about Titans. I'm really excited for that. Yes, and we'll be talking about Titans. So on that note, like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell because you will help out Jared to successfully get up to more than... Uh, if you get him up to 400 subs, that'd be super yeah. appreciative. Let's it's get very up to 400, guys. And stay heroic, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you